Hello everyone, Paul Ayers here. Welcome to part 3 of our Yoshima 124th Lamborghini Aventador build. Now, I was planning for 4 videos, we managed to get into 3, uh, mainly because I've lost a bit of the footage. Um, sadly, as we progress through the build and we start to assemble the interior, literally everything is painted and ready to go, and we're just starting to assemble the car, I've lost the footage. Uh, it's as simple as that. So we go from putting a bit of the interior in to the car complete. There's nothing I can do about it. It's a bit gutting, but it's just one of those things. Now, to me, this has been a bit of a nightmare. Um, partly the kit, partly me. The doors are a nightmare on this kit. They will not fit at all. Um, and you'll see that in a bit. There's massive gaps on them. It's a well-known fault with this kit. I built the kit before. I somehow managed to get the doors to A, work, which is a miracle, and B, kind of close pretty well. On this one, I cannot get the doors to work, so I gave up on the mechanism, so I glued them shut. Uh, and even then, there's gaps galore everywhere. The windows don't sit right. It's just one of those things. Literally yesterday, finishing this off, if it could go wrong, it did. I had an absolute nightmare, uh, to the point this thing nearly went in the bin several times. Didn't really enjoy the build, uh, especially the last stages. It's just a very, very fiddly kit. It's a nice kit, it goes together pretty well. It's just really, really fiddly, and those doors are a nightmare. If Aeroshima could sort the doors out, it'd be a fantastic kit, but it's just one of those. Like I say, I've managed it once, so it can be done. So maybe it was just me, I don't know. But like I say, I've not really, if I'm honest, enjoyed this build all that much. But it's there, it's complete, and I'm gonna talk through now the footage I've got. We've still got about half an hour of footage. Uh, shown it being sprayed, the airbrush being sprayed, the semi-gloss clear from Tamiya being used, uh, Mr. Services, so on and so forth. So we've still got some footage to go through, but literally as we get to the end and start to assemble the interior, that's it. So we're going to go nearly there to there in a heartbeat. So that is that, sadly. Right, so let's crack on with the build and let's get started. So off camera, I have painted and primed the interior. It's primed UMP grey primer and then painted the mixture of Mr. Colour uh, C1 and C58, white and orange to give this cream colour. I've also polished up all the body as well, which I'll show a little bit later on. Standard procedure as we did in the Subaru build, but I do show it in a little bit. Um, so what we've done, we've got this nice cream colour. Uh, now on the SV, it does call for a two-tone interior. I don't want to be masking off these little panels because they look a nightmare. So we're going to give it a wash. So before we actually delve into doing all of it. I'm just going to leave this as a test piece. So we've got some of my Tamiya panel line wash which I have thinned a little bit more with some Winsor Newton Santa's Door uh, Mineral Spirits. I like it to be a little bit thinner. It flows a lot better and it's not as thick. Um, so I'm just going to pop some in, let it dry, see what it looks like. If I'm happy with how it looks, we'll then put it on all the interior parts. I just want to give it a bit of contrast. I don't want it being plain. But as you can see, the centre panels there on the SV, they are a different colour. But they'd be a nightmare to mask, and they'd look awful hand-painted, in my opinion. So we're doing this to add a bit of interest. And after it dries, we'll see what it looks like. As long as it looks good, we'll pop it on all the panels. So once it's dry, wipe off a cotton board, a little bit of odorless mineral spirits, and we'll see what it looks like. So we're going to mask off some of the interior parts. Uh, we're going to let that seat dry. But there's some parts I want to do in black to give a bit of contrast and a bit of interest. So the headliner, we'll leave the rear part in the cream colour. And we're going to paint the front part in semi-gloss black. So a bit of careful masking with the uh, Azu tape, which is fantastic for this. Thick enough to cover quickly, but conforms around corners and bends really well. And it's just like mini Tamiya tape. It's really, really good. Onto the dashboard. So we painted all the inside front face of the dashboard in the cream. I'm going to do all the back of it in semi-gloss black. As you can see, a bit of careful masking. It works beautiful. Uh, and we're filling in any gaps with little pieces. And then we'll come back in with some Tamiya tape in a little bit. And as you can see, we've filled in all around the edges and the side. And that will give a nice two-tone combination. Semi-gloss black and the cream. Centre console, a little bit trickier to mask. Um, if you look around the top, there is a definition between the little console and the actual uh, centre panel itself. So we're going to mask around that, again using the Azu tape, carefully mask around it, getting the outline done, and then filling in the excess with Tamiya tape. 
What I ever did before AZ tape, I do not know. I cannot remember. Uh, I must have been cutting tapes thin into strips. This stuff is beautiful. Like I say, it's just like quality-wise, it's just like a thin Tamiya tape. It is absolutely beautiful, and it saves so much time in masking uh, small parts and also around the window rubbers, which you'll see in a little bit as well. Now, there's a little speaker grill on the Aventador door. The Aventador door. So we're just going to pop this on. Using the Miss Hobby tweezers here as well. These are really good. Actually, a good, viable alternative to the Tamiya's. I don't think they're quite up there with the quality of the Tamiya's. Um, but they are decent tweezers. I've used them this entire build. And they're not bad at all. Not bad at all. Got nice green finger grips on them. They grip well. They're pointed well. And they work really well. So that right there is my mix of paints. That was probably a couple of drops of orange to white. And that's for the interior colour. And then we've got Tamiya's new lacquer paints. Semi-gloss black. So this is thin 50-50. We have Mr. Hobby level and thinner. And then we're sprayed on at about 20 PSI. Nice light thin coats. Building it up until we get nice even coverage all round. Now being a lacquer paint you can thin a little bit more. This will allow you to build up the coats a little bit quicker. As you can see we can get them down a little bit wetter. I've sped this bit up because uh, it's just me painting the interior parts but basically what I do is get a nice thinnish coat down first as you can see. Put the part to one side move on to the other one and then come back and then come back and build it up and up and up probably two coats per part once I'm happy with it we'll leave it to dry again being lacquer it dries nice and fast the downside is it stinks <laughs> the level thinner absolutely reeks if you've not got a decent extractor or you've got pets or family in the house I wouldn't recommend using it at all it really does honk but these Tamiya paints are absolutely beautiful and there we go all painted up. Now the interior first painted in uh, UMP Black Primer and now we've got the Zero Paint Textured Paint. Uh, like I said I was going to flock this using some uh, embossing powder but I couldn't find any. <laughs> Hannah was convinced she had some. Hannah's my girlfriend. She used to make cards and what have you and she was convinced she had some. Sadly she didn't so I thought right okay this is a good alternative. It works well. It's simple. Uh, it gives a pretty good impression of a texture or um, a carpet or what have you spraying it on at about 20 psi nice light thin coats building it up now if you think other paint stinks this is probably some of the worst smelling paint I've known it is very very noxious so make sure you got a respirator on and a decent extractor as well and what we're doing is getting all those little nooks and crannies and sure we've got even coverage all around it's good stuff um, I do like to use this it's good for textured engine covers uh, anything you want to add a texture feel to it. It's got little bits in there and the more you build it up the more texture you get. Another little trick I like to do especially on seats when I'm trying to get that real fabric look is hold the par further away and as the paint flows out it dries midair, hits it semi wet and uh, gives a really nice cloth texture look to it. So there we go, so they dry a few seconds then we come back add a bit more so we're just getting all over. Even coverage anywhere where we'd assume carpet would be. It just breaks it up a little bit. It doesn't look as good as flock, I will admit that. But as a simple effect, as you'll see, it's not too bad. It breaks up the monotony. And it doesn't look all that bad at all. Leave that to dry for a couple of hours and you'll be good to go. So there we go, we're unmasking all the interior now. Very carefully, make sure you don't touch any of freshly painted parts and make sure you're not ripping the masking tape off like a madman, like I am here. All my masking tape is detached before it goes down, so I'm pretty confident it will not pull anything off. As you can see, we've got a real nice definition there between the semi gloss black and the cream colour. Just going to grab our tweezers again. Like I say, good tweezers these, got a nice point on them, they grab everything you want them to. Some of the cheaper tweezers, the, the tips will bend, and you'll find yourself struggling to pick parts up. I'm struggling to get a part off here, there we go. But these are good quality, and they are, like I say, they're a good viable alternative to the Tamiya's. And there we go, last few pieces. There we go. Like I say, very nice contrast there, that looks really good. Very, very happy how that looks. Onto the seat now. We're going to rub off the uh, wash we put on earlier. 
and have a little look what we think. So far it looks really good. It's given a nice bit of interest to the seat. And just breaking up the monotony of that single colour. Like I say, for the most part you can remove it with just a cotton board, but if not, a little bit of the odorous mineral spirits will remove the rest. So there we go, we're going to allow the capillary action to carry it around any of the body panels. Like this, we've got little recesses, etc. And we just leave those to dry, and once they're dry, we can remove the excess. Just looking on the centre panel, not really anywhere to apply any black. We'll put some grey on that later. But the dashboard's got a few places. We've got the heat events. So you could hand paint these should you wish. But for me, the simplest way is to put a wash through. So around the glove box. And then we're going to pick out the heat events. So making sure that the brush isn't fully loaded up. We just want to give the impression. We don't want to completely fill it full of black. And obviously the less you put down... In the beginning, the less you have to remove later on. So now we've got the front uh, panels you putting in. They've all been painted up, or they need painting up. So anything on the exterior that's black, we're going to paint in the semi-gloss black from Tamiya. So it's basically most of these parts I've circled in red. Something I've started doing recently to keep track of parts that need painting or need different colours. Just to make a note of what still needs painting and to make sure that when I've got that colour out and ready, it's there to be painted up. So there you go. So we're going to cut off some of the parts using the GX nippers. These are the single blade uh, cutters. Getting used to these going through the build. Um, they felt a bit alien at first, but they are nice cutters. I find cutting a little bit further to the edge works better. Not right on the edge, you don't want to do that. But I've been cutting through the middle. And I think cutting near the tip works better, in my opinion. But they cut nice and flush, nice and clean, and with very little effort as well. Plus they're adjustable, they've got adjustment on the uh, jaws as well, which is a nice little touch. And as you see, it makes short work of these parts. Cut them off the sprue. There's minimal, minimal sprue to clean up later on, and works really well. Like I say, I'll do a review of these separately, and I'll have a proper look at them in depth. So there we go, there's the LP5, semi-gloss black, that's the paint we've been using. So I've got it decanted in my little dropper bottle, thin 50-50 with Mr. Level and Thinner for Mr. Hobby. And we've got our Mr. Hobby custom airbrush now, with its 0.18mm needle nozzle, with about 15 psi. And we're going to do a nice light thin coat. It's going to build up nice and slow. These are exterior parts, so we will be seeing these. So we're just going to build up as we go. Very nice airbrush. Atomizes the paint really, really nicely. Gives nice coverage. My only criticism of it is the trigger is a little bit sharp at the back. And I only notice it when cleaning, when my finger runs around the back to, to clean the edge. Ooh, other than that, it's a beautiful airbrush, high precision airbrush. And again, we'll do a proper review of this at a later date as well. But spraying these really nice. These are beautiful paints. Really happy with these. Can't wait for them to be available in the UK. At the minute, you've got to source them from outside. Hopefully, we will get them. There will be no silly labeling restrictions. But we will see. Now, I've used the Mr. Colour Semi Gloss Black. And again, it's a nice colour. But I think this Tammy has got it licked, unfortunately. It just seems to be a really nice colour. But I've used Mr. Colour and it does spray really nice. It's certainly better than X18 Tamiya, which is the go to semi gloss black. But it does go down really nice. This is the rear diffuser. Now, a lot of these black parts I hope to carbon fibre. Things like this I could have done. It takes a lot of work, but I could have done it. But around the front bumper inserts, it would have been nigh impossible to do. So I made the executive decision of, right, no carbon parts, we'll just semi-gloss black it all. Bit of a shame, we will show, I'll show carbon in later videos. I was hoping to put some on this to give it a bit of interest. But sadly, it doesn't always work out the way we want it to. 
So there we go. Get a nice coverage on there. We'll leave that to one side for five minutes, let it dry a little bit, and then come back and put a final coat on it. Right, so the body, I showed it polished up earlier. Um, so we've gone back in time a little bit now. We've got some 8,000 grit micro mesh wet and dry. Uh, we've got a couple of blemishes to take care of on the roof and the bonnet or the hood for our American friends. Uh, we're just going to take them back with this, then hit it with the 12,000 and then give it a good polish up. So we've got a little bit of water. Always use this wet, never use it dry. It works a lot better, it removes the material better and you get less scratches on the surface from it as well. So barely any finger pressure, I'm just feeling for the raised detail there. It's a little bit of fluff or dust that's landed on the roof unfortunately. Just one of those things and then periodically wipe it over gently with some kitchen roll just to check how you're going. If it's not quite there, give a little bit more. We're just going to flat this down. Now, you probably better go into 6,000 grit wet and dry on this to get rid of the um, blemish quicker. But I like to work at it just with the 8,000. It saves a lot more polishing and just seems to give a better overall finish at the end. Right, new in are these new Tamiya compound sponges. We've got these in at umpretail.com. I've not tried them at all yet. They are little um, semi-hard sponge uh, polishers. We've got some Novus fine polish remover here. And the idea is it gives you a nice flat finish for applying the polish. Now, as always, a little bit sceptical, but I thought I'd give them a go. They're about four or five pounds from our website. And I thought, let's give them a whirl. So again, using them wet, I thought, hmm, these actually work quite well. So because you're using a flat surface rather than your finger on a cloth, it keeps the pressure uniform. You can see with the edges at all times. So you can stay clear of any edges to save you burning through. And you've got perfect control. They come in three different sizes. You've got like a mini rectangle, a medium, and this larger square. So they can get all the little nooks and crannies. And I was pretty impressed. Um, a worthy little tool. They're clean. You can clean them once you're done. Just rinse them off in the water. Put them back in. And I think for the case of polishing cars two sets might be worth having keep it for your different compounds i know you can flip it around but it's easy to lose track of which you've been using for what and uh, i was very impressed how well these work so the whole car was given a go over exactly like i've just shown if there wasn't a blemish it was hit with twelve thousand and then polished if there was it was the eight thousand first and it was given a good go over once we're happy it's been polished we give it a a buff off with our cloth and if you're not happy, repeat. If you are, move on to the next panel. I go panel by panel, so bonnet, roof, boot, and then each side panel as we go. I like to keep it that way. I know where I've done, and we go around systematically. I'm a little bit OCD like that. But at least I always know where it's been polished and where it hasn't. And we're just giving this a really nice polish. Now be careful at this stage. It's very easy to apply too much pressure and start to break panels off or crush the roof. So let the cloth do the work. Don't be worrying too much about what's going on. And there we go. So that's it. The whole car has been done now. As you can see, plenty of mess all over my bench. There's polish everywhere. What I also like to do at the very end as well is use the Tamiya finishing compound as well to fully go over. And as you can see, we've got a fantastic shine on that. We had a great shine in the first place, but flatten it back with a micro mesh. And those lovely little Tam uh, Tamiya compound sponges. Has given us a very very nice finish it's not flawless but it'll do for me very very nice so yeah highly recommend those little tamiya sponges they're very good they're cheap uh, more so they work very very well all the other panels have been done as well separately and like i say using the different sizes you can get right in there in all the nooks and crannies now this kit comes with some photo etch so we've got a rear cover for the engine bay and then several uh, meshes for the front and rear bumper. Now, we're cutting this out. This is the Small Shop Tools um, cutting mat, uh, my Tamiya knife, and a nice flat edge. You just touch it with your knife, cut through the PE, and it gives a perfect finish. Sadly, parts like this are a little bit too thin for getting the photo etch shears in there. Uh, you tend to do more damage than good. So sometimes when the fret opening isn't as big, it's easier to cut them like this. Uh, it's a tool that you use all the time. It's literally a sheet of perspex. That's all it is. 
So if you've got anything like this, you can use it yourself. But it's a handy little tool to have in the arsenal. So there you go, cut it out, and away we go. So there we are. So this is a uh, panel for the front grille. We've got our Tamiya Pro Diamond file there. And we're just going to take off all the little fret points where it's been cut off to make it nice and smooth. Very high quality tool this, really, really nice. Make short work of all the photo etch rough parts. And yes, you can use a normal file, you can use pixie dust, elf shoes, whatever you want to do it. But as a tool, Tammy makes some fantastic tools and this is a brilliant one as well. Highly recommended. Again, we've got this umpretail.com. Go over and have a look. I've had this tool now for about eight years and it's a fantastic, invaluable tool for photo etch in my opinion. Right, so we need to slightly bend this front panel to fit the actual grill itself. So we've got a UMP sponge, my photo etch file. Uh, we just pop it on, roll it over a couple of times, and hey presto, it fits in perfect. Simple, you can buy rolling tools, I have one, but the Tamiya, the, uh, sorry, the UMP sponge trick works very, very well. So we've got some Loctite super glue, CA glue. I'm just going to put a couple of dots in strategic places. I'm trying to keep it out of the view. You don't want to see it through the mesh. So you're looking for any solid areas of the photo etch to glue it to. That way it doesn't look awful when you look through the mesh. And there we go. Applying tiny little dabs. There should go. I always like to decant my CA glue for doing parts like this. And using a good old cocktail stick toothpick. For popping it on so line it up first before you commit to gluing once you're happy where it is give it a little press make sure you get no glue on your fingers otherwise it'll end up everywhere and once you're happy give it a little squeeze and let it set and there we go one grill fixed and ready for paint so our body works all done now we need to mask off our window rubbers we've got some of the awesome azu tape again Uh, we've got our 2.5 mil here, which is fine in the end. There we go. Ta-da! Our Tamiya scissors. And we're just going to go around, and any pieces we can get the larger tape in, we'll apply it. We've got our tweezers again from Mr. Hobby. Pop them in place. Line it up where you want the window edge. Use a reference front of the body. Uh, sorry, the front of the box as reference. Any real pictures of the car, so on and so forth. Just make sure you get everything where it needs to go. I've sped this up, so I'm going to leave you to it, and you can watch me fly through and mask all this. As you can see, I'm burnishing the edges down with a Tamiya cotton, uh, cotton bud as well to ensure we're fully home, and that's the case all the way around. <laughs>
Okay, there we go. So they're all masked. Now we're filling all the excess areas with um, cling film to ensure we don't get any overspray on the body. So we got onto the clear parts now. As always, give them a good wipe over before you're starting to put any masking down or whatever to avoid any scratches, uh, fingerprints, dust, etc. Uh, I've got a nice bag of sock soft cotton cloth that I cut to size for each bit it goes in the bin after being used I don't use it again so we don't get any contaminants on it or rubbish the kit comes with a mask set now these are either going to go on first go round or in my case it's going to take about 20 goes to get it on uh, in the Subaru we got it on first time round in this one no chance it ain't going on first time uh, but by the magic of video editing we get one edge on two edges on oh well, look it's fitted on how amazing is that so first time round, it fitted, when in reality it took about 20 peel-offs and reapplies to get it on. Once you've got it where you want it, make sure you've got no bubbles in there, make sure the edges are fully home and down, make sure it's lined up properly. You can remove them again, uh, as I did several times, uh, but just to make sure it's fully where you want it, because otherwise paint will seep underneath and it looks awful. Always a nice uh, sight to see these masking sets. Uh, they do make life a lot easier and give a better finish in my opinion as well so good to get it inside the kit and there we go so that is now ready for paint obviously we paint on the inside another little tip i give as well is if you're going to put any mounting uh, pay, uh white tack on there put it on the mask don't put it on the glass because i found it marks the plastic so we've got some ump black primer uh we've got the apex again we're at 25 psi and we're just going to lightly go around all the parts, making sure we're spraying them the right way. So the side windows we're spraying from outside. So this is the exterior. Uh, we're going to go around the window rubbers again. I've already given them a light coat. Anything else where the mask is, make sure you're spraying it on the correct side, which is usually going to be inside. But on these, they're on the outside to match the rest of the window rubbers. So again, just very light coats. There's no rush, just take your time. This is the glass part between the engine bay and the cockpit. As you can see, we've got a bit of white tack on the mask itself with a cocktail stick on it. Uh, as I said before, putting the white tack on the glass, I found it marks it. And there's a residue that you cannot get off, so I do it this way now. So, a couple of coats on each part of the glass. That's left to dry, ready for a third coat. And then we'll just come back and put a second coat on the exterior framework. As you can see, we use cling film to mask off the rest of the body. It saves tape, saves time, it makes things a lot easier and simpler. All we've got to make sure on the glass is the uh, on the window rubbers is we get every angle and even coverage. So we're on to the interior now. We're just popping in our centre console. It's a little bit of CA glue. Knock it over, pick it up, there we go. Pop it in place, two locating points. Once it's there, we're happy, we can put the seats in place. Now I applied it to the rails, apply it to the seat, it's less messy. I do have a little bit of glue squidgy out the front here, which I cleaned up very quickly with a cotton bud. I found the lack of paint, the sea glue doesn't attack it as much as it does with any of the other acrylics. So you do get a little bit of time to remove any excess should you need to, which I'm just doing there now. So on the next seat, we're going to apply it to the bottom of the seat instead and then pop that in place there we go like so things you'll learn as you go and pick up as you get there so very happy with how this interior is looking it's a nice contrast between the black and the cream color as you can see there's all our seat tin center console and dash in we put a bit of gray wash on the center console as well i did show it in the video but sadly uh Yes, it's uh, it's not shown because it's got lost. And here we have the roof liner. And this is the last bit of the bill because, oh, it's all gone missing. So we're going to go from putting this roof liner on, which looks great, to going to me because the build's finished. So like I say, sadly we lost some of the footage. It was literally uh, building up the car, which is a bit of a shame to lose. Uh, but to be honest, it was about two or three hours of me swearing. Uh, so it was pretty frustrating anyway. Um, and that's it. So we'll go back to me and have a look at the finished build. Okay, so there we go. Sadly, we go from assembling the body to fully finish. It's just the way it is. There's the kit there. Uh, I'm going to put some pictures up in a minute. I'll have a little chat. Um, but like I say, it was going really well. Crap with the cream interior. I was able to show it off through the doors, but that's not going to happen because the doors won't work. Um, the doors are glued shut. You can still see the interior, luckily. And it does look a good contrast between the, um, the grey 
and uh, the white. So happy I chose that colour, I really am. Uh, but really disappointed in the finish of the kit. Is it down to me? Possibly. It's hard to say at the end of the day. Uh, but I just wasn't feeling this kit at all. So that is that. So let's have a look at the car while we're there. So I've got some stills, not got a lot of them, but here we go. So, like I say, all the black works, uh, Tamiya semi-gloss black. Uh, we primed the entire car in a mix of uh, UMP grey and white primer. It was then sprayed in Mr. Hobby, Mr. Colour H308. Uh, to Pro Range 2K, it was polished with the Micromesh wet and dry. And then, uh, sorry, it was sanded, flatted with the Micromesh wet and dry. And then polished up with the Novus compounds um, to a good shine. I've got a decent shine on it, not perfect, but... It certainly was a decent shine. Um, anything black, basically on the exterior, is Tamiya semi-gloss black. And for the most part on the interior, the engine bay, etc. is Mr. Surf's so black. I like it to give contrasting colours. Uh, the wheels are done in the same 308 colour. Uh, I saw a picture of this car online and liked how it looked. So that's what I went for. And like I say, the interior is a mix of Mr. Colour 58 orange and Mr. Colour 1 white. Just to eye, to give it that cream colour. And I got a pretty good colour out of it, so I'm very happy with that interior. Um, just a real shame you can't really see it, and the doors don't work, and there's gaps in the doors and windows. It's just a shame, it's just one of those things. Um, like I say, not with the most motivating the builds, so uh, there'll be no video builds for a little bit. I'm going to have a little bit of a break. I'm going to crack on with some builds with Sam. Uh, I'll do a bench update in the morning, uh, hopefully, or Sunday morning, showing this, the finished McLaren, which I've got to finish off as well and mine and Sam's next project as well. So there we are. So, sorry about the missing footage, sorry about the skip, and uh, yes, we're there though, it got finished, um, and it looks okay. On the most part, it looks good. It's an interesting colour. I'm glad I chose that colour as well. Um, I did hope to put some carbon on it, but no chance. And I was also gonna flock the interior with some embossing powder, uh, but couldn't find any. Uh, Hannah said she had some. But she didn't, so we'll show that again on a later date uh, in a later video as well. So there we go. Uh, not my best build series at all, but I hope you enjoyed watching it. And uh, that's the finished result. So there we go. So I'll catch you all next time. Make sure you go check out uh, modelemporium.shop. Frey very kindly supplied me with the kit, the tools, the airbrush, etc., some of the paints, and so on and so forth. And some of those tools are beautiful. We will cover the tools in separate reviews. I'll do a review of the uh, the cutters. Uh, and we'll have a look at the airbrush a bit more in depth as well. That'll come in a few days. I'm going to have a break from videos at the minute. I can't do a bench update and that's it. <laughs> I'm done for a little bit. Um, I have a couple of reviews to do. Thank you very much for free supply and everything. Absolutely brilliant. As always, check out the Cisco Model Facebook page and forum. Check out my Paul ISM modeling page. Check out umpretail.com, myself and Lee's business. We can get most of the tools I'm working with that weren't from Frey, all the Tamiya tools, sanders, etc, etc. Everything else you can get from there. All the links are in the description down below. Uh, check out the Hangout Modeling Group. They offer Hangouts a Friday Night Live on the Bench page. Don't forget our charity auction on the 1st of March as well for Models for Heroes on the Friday Night Live show. And there we go. Make sure you sub to the channel. And uh, that's it. So I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.